welcome to All in Yellow. The official Norwich City podcast. Campbell cuts in. He's on the corner of the loop and penalty area here. Todd Campbell gets it onto his right foot. Low shot. Oh, it sneaks in. Norwich have scored. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the All in Yellow podcast. Great to have you company. We have a real treat for you this week. Our guest epitomises everything Norwich City is about right now. It's someone who was born in Norfolk and made it through the ranks at the academy to become a key part of the first team. It's none other than Todd Cantwell. Todd, absolutely brilliant to have you on the podcast today. Now, at the time of talking, we're speaking to you off the back of that thumping over Huddersfield, a 7-0 win at Carra Road. Attention from right across the world. Life must be pretty good for you right now. Yeah, no, I can't complain at the moment. Um, obviously, yeah, it's an emphatic win the other day. And yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant to, um, to finally sort of take all of our chances in a game. So I think we've, it's been coming, um, the greatest respect to, to the other teams. I think we've, it's been coming where we were probably going to score, you know, five or six goals. But yeah, no, it all came together nicely. So a long time coming then? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. Did you have any sense that it might be Tuesday evening when that when it all clicked and came together? Because you guys looked on it. Yeah, no, we did. I, d- I don't know. I don't know. I think, obviously, like, you know, we were obviously a little bit frustrated after the Preston game um, with them scoring so late on. And, you know, we had a couple of chances in that game to put that, bed, put that game to bed, sorry. So... Um, Nah, nothing, nothing felt different. I think that's the thing, though. I think when we're all at it, and I think everyone was, I think everyone played, you know, very, very well. That's what we can do at this level. And, you know, it was, it was nice to, um, to do it in an important time. You know, we needed to win that game. Um, and, yeah, obviously it's a step closer to what we want. Yeah, we're absolutely running away with it at the minute. Obviously, a little way still to go at the time of talking right now. But by the time this podcast goes out, we could actually be up there. I mean, how incredible does that all feel so far? Yeah, no, it, it, it does feel amazing. I think, obviously, naturally, it feels a little bit um, shadowed by the fact that fans aren't allowed in and we haven't had that, you know, that atmosphere for the games because I can imagine Kyle Road would be absolutely rocking with, with how we're playing and, like you say, the position we're in. So... Yeah, it feels a little bit shadow because obviously we've done it before and I've been I've done it before. So I know what it feels like when the fans are there. And yeah, it was it was incredible. But I don't think it will ever take anything away from what we're achieving. And, and hopefully, you know, um, in the coming months, we'll be able to have a bit of a celebration together. How do you find that affects your performance, Todd? Like, you know, with no fans in there driving you on, if you're losing, lacking a bit of energy or something like that, how have you managed to keep that level throughout the season? I think, to be honest, it's a case of adapting, really. I think, you know, when, we, when it first started, it did feel quite strange. Um, with the greatest respect, it did feel more like a training game as opposed to like a proper game. Um, and, yeah, I think, you know, even from, I, I think it was the start of the season where we had a couple, I think it was a couple of thousand people in the stadium. Still just felt weird. It didn't feel right. Um, I'm all for getting as much as we can into the stadium, but, like, you can't compare that. Do you know what I mean? To what it was, you just can't compare it. So it definitely feels strange, but I think adapting to it now and the realisation that, look, we crack on, you know, and we keep doing what we do and we know everyone's watching, we know everyone's, you know, knows the result. It's not like because they're not there, they don't know what's going on. So, no, I think it's been, it's been uplifting for us knowing that we're uplifting the county with our results. So I think, yeah, I think it's, it's still been good, but yeah, it's not, it's not ideal by any means. What, what has been kind of the magic ingredient behind the success this season? Because you often hear about, you know, a hangover coming down from the Premier League. Obviously, it was a fairly slow start to the season, but turned that around really quickly. Where's it all come from? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's difficult because if I speak very honestly with you guys, I think it's, it shouldn't have been an expectation to go straight back up. I really don't think it should. Yeah, we've got fantastic players. You know, yeah, we all know we all know what we're capable of, but... You know, you've seen it year on years, you know, good teams get relegated from the Premier League and they get stuck. You know, the championships are very tough division. There's not many easy games at all. And I think um, I think for us, I think we probably put the, you know, let's get back into the Premier League straight away out of, out of our heads. Because like you said, it weren't the quickest start. It wasn't like, we, we, you know, we, we, we looked like we was going to, you know, ab- um, obliterate the league. It wasn't like that. So I think for us to just look at it like, we need to win games. We need to get in the top six. That's our priority. We need to we need to be fighting in and around that. And then I think that as it's gone on, it's become more and more reality that you know we keep winning. Um, I think it was a, the, the streak where we went on like nine wins in a row, where it starts to you know you'd be stupid if you wasn't 
expecting us to be in the top two at that point. And then it gets to the point where obviously we're, we're top and we've been top, I don't know for how long now, but we've been top for a long time. It now feels like it's our place to lose. So the mentality is completely different. It's like, if we don't win the league now, we've done something wrong. Whereas before it was like, if we get into the top six and get a chance of going up, then we've done something right. Um, but that's the season, I suppose. That's just how it's played out. That's really interesting, actually, to hear you talk like that, Todd, because it, it, the message seems to be like, we shouldn't take for granted what's been achieved this season. Because perhaps a little bit contrary to uh, previous promotions, I don't want to say it feels relaxing and we feel a bit more in control as fans. But, but we do sort of have a, an unbelievable confidence in you guys every time you step out there. What you're telling us is, hey, guys, you know, this is, this is no mean achievement being in the position we're in. Yeah, no, I think it can feel like that because, you know, you look at the players, you look at, you know, Timo, Emmy, uh, fantastic players, you know, all the, all the way through the team. Let's just name a couple, you know, all the way through the team. Skippy's come in, he's done amazing. Max is, is, is arguably the best right back in the league. You know, we've got players all over, all over. I think it kind of, maybe because of the names on the team sheet, maybe it feels like we should have, you know, that was an expectation. I think if you look at it realistically and you look at the teams that are in the championship, teams like Nottingham Forest, teams like Sheffield Wednesday, you know, these are big, big teams, big teams. And they've got very good players. They've got very experienced championship players. We haven't got abundance of experience in the championship. For most of our team, it was we had one season in championship and we managed to win it. So for us, it's like, I think this is, this is where maybe like, like what you were touching on then, that it shouldn't be an expectancy to, to go back up. It shouldn't have been. And I think we should be realistic in the sense of that wasn't even our, our goal from the outset. Our goal from the outset was to obviously try and get up. It wasn't like we're going to win the league. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're not good enough for the Prem, but we, we'll, we'll win the championship. It wasn't like that. So with all that in mind, how did you regroup? Because obviously there was Project Restart and then, and then going down. What were the conversations that you as a group had with Daniel Farker heading into this season? I think, um, I think the boss is, has always been pretty, um, pretty clear with, with his, you know, his morals, the way he likes things to be done. And, uh, you know, he, he, didn't like win, he didn't like losing just as much as we did. It. You know, we, we hated it. Um, it wasn't a nice way to go down last year. And I think there was a... A real, um, what's the word? It felt quite doom and gloom at the end of last season. Do you know what I mean? It really felt like we had, we had messed up as such. Um, I think a lot of players felt that. A lot of players felt, you know, disappointment, you know, almost like we'd let people down. And it's not a nice feeling. It's, it's the first time I'd felt like that in football. Um, luckily, I've, I've been lucky to have very good experiences in my, my career so far. And it, I think it either goes one or two ways. Um, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything a manager or anyone can say to you. I think it's either you've got it in you or you haven't. You either fight back now and put put it right as such. That's the way I looked at it. Put it right, or you walk out the door and you pretend it never happened. And I think most people in that change room looked at it as much as say this is an opportunity to put what we did last season right. And although, like you say, nothing's nothing's concrete yet, we've put ourselves in a fantastic position with six games left. Um, and yeah, like I say, it's ours to mess up now. So I think that reaction is, is what is ingrained in the players that we have in the changing room. That's how I... That's interesting, Todd. How did that affect you personally in between that um, sort of setback and the start of the new season? Were you always 100% sure? You, you've listed those two options there. Were you always 100% sure, actually, you know what, let's get our heads down. And me personally, I'm going to play my part in, in helping Norwich City get back to where they belong. Yeah, I think, I think if I'm being brutally honest, last season was, was a confusing end. Um, I saw my name in the papers an awful amount about different teams wanting, you know, your services. Um, you know, I was, I was 22. I've not been through any of that before. Like I say, I've had a pretty, um, a pretty good start to my career. Everything's been, you know, trajectory like that since I've been a professional. Um, and yeah, you know, like I say, everything went crashing down. We got relegated. Um, there was links, there was conversations about whether I'd be there next year and all of these bits and pieces. And I think it got to a point where I sat around the table with, with my family um, and said, look, I've had a, a, like, you know, it's at the point where I've just had enough of hearing this, hearing that. And, you know, realistically, we've got um, a real salty taste in my mouth about 
my local club and what it means to me for this club to be in the Premier League. I think it probably does mean more to me to see this club be in the Premier League than it does to other people. And that's no disrespect to anyone. That's like anyone, you know, if you're, if you're a local lad or, you know, you've got the DNA of a football club inside you, you can't take that out. And you, you, no matter how much you, you know, you move to a club and say you care about him, it will never be the same feeling. So for me, I felt like I owed it to myself because I didn't play a massive part in the championship the year we went up. I played a good amount, but I didn't play as much as I'd like to. And it was fantastic. We got promoted. But as a player and as the sort of person I am, I wanted to, to prove myself. And a lot of people said, oh, you know, he's, he's really good in the Premier League. And all this is brilliant to hear. It's fantastic to hear. But there's a part of me deep down that wanted to prove that, you know, I'm not just a good player because I'm playing on better pitches or bigger atmosphere or more people watching. I'm a good player because I, I, I've learned and I've grown into a good player. And I wanted to prove that in one of the toughest leagues in the world. Um, and that hit me, that hit me quite hard. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really a, a, an opportunity for me to prove myself that I am at this level now and that I am a good player in the, champ, in, in the Premier League and I'm a great player in the Championship. That's what I wanted to prove. Yeah, you say it hit you quite hard. What part of it hit you hard and did you find quite difficult to deal with? Um, I think it's a speculation, to be honest. I think, you know, no one, ever, no one ever trains you for any of this stuff. I think people sometimes think that, you know, footballers get, get sat down at 13 and say, you know, when you're a professional and you earn this amount of money and you live this life. And, and like I touched on before, like my career had all been, you know, positive and I'm very thankful for that. I wouldn't change it. But no one ever sits you down and says, when it all goes that way and when you know, uh, people are pointing fingers at you or people are pointing fingers at the club that you're involved in. Um, people want your services. People, you know, this club wants you for this. This club wants you for that. And you're sat in the middle of it thinking, I'm just sat in a whirlwind here. I don't know what is going on. And I had, I had no one that had been through it before. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to speak to anyone about every detail because I'm sure you can imagine, you know, there's, there's details that you, you, you don't let out. Um, and it was almost like, it was almost, to me, it felt like it was like, th this is what's happened. You either adapt to it now or you almost drown in it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, you had a good year and, you know, this and this and, and what's going on. And I thought to myself, you know, there has to be a part where I take control of this situation because ultimately no one was taking control of it for me. Um, and, and that's no fault of anyone. I, would, I don't point fingers when I, say, when I speak like this. I think this is probably the first opportunity I've had to speak and say it's not black and white and no one ever tells you how to adapt to situations that they don't even know about. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I think it was, it was the speculation. It was the, the intense conversations about, you know, your services and what would be happening and this and that. And you, you, you get, you know, you get caught up in it. I think anyone would, it's in any line of work. It's not just football. You know, if you're, if you're working in a supermarket and you get pulled in and someone says, look, I want to offer you this, I want to do this, we can do that. And you sit there and say, well, and then they turn around and say something else or counteract. And, and it's everything. You don't know how to react to it, you know? Um, and yeah, you know, I think, like I said, I had a salty taste in my mouth about Norwich and what I wanted to, to prove slash achieve here. And, you know, hopefully we can, we can touch that, you know, this season. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, when you, when you put it like that, you talk about that whirlwind and then, you also say how old you were at the start. What were you, do you say 21, 22? Yeah, it's not 20. Yeah, yeah that is, that's, that's mad for someone that age to deal with that stuff. Because we're talking, you know, let's, let's be honest, we're talking high salaries, we're talking high attention. It's a lot to deal with. How did you start the process of coming out of that whirlwind? And who, who helped? You said yourself there you took charge. But yeah. when did you start having conversations with people at the club and going, actually, okay, I think I'm in the right place. I think I know what I want to achieve. Let's do this. Yeah, I think um, I think I think the big the biggest problem for me and the biggest problem for the situation and how it developed was how the media were, you know, as the season started, was still linking me with these teams and and things were still every everything that seemed to be having you know private conversations seemed to be in the media somehow. And yeah, they weren't detailed and they weren't you know the ins and outs. But for me, it was like. You know, every, everything's everyone can see what's going on, but that doesn't mean that is what's going on. So because the the paper say, you know, I can remember one um, one day I can't remember what game it was. I'd been left out of been left out of the team, and I saw that you know Leeds bid fifteen million for Cantwell, and my phone was erupting. People were saying, "Oh, you come in here and you know welcome and all of this," and I'm sat there thinking, 
but how am I in this position where I've not travelled with my team to play in a game and, you know, according to the papers, I'm going to Leeds today. I've been spotted in Leeds and I'm thinking, no, I haven't. I'm sat in, I'm sat in the gym, annoyed that I'm not in the squad for my... Do you know what I mean? And it's just like things can look so different, can look so different to the truth. And I'm not saying there was, there was no truth behind things. I don't want to go into that. But what I mean is, I was, I, I was ready, do you know what I mean? I was ready at that point, but I had to have conversations and I had to probably assure other people that I was ready because I think the relationship I have with the manager, the manager obviously is the one who, who from the start really believed in me. From the first time I was in front of him, obviously I had a good experience of Alex Neal as well, but from the first time I got put in front of the manager, I remember thinking at that time and, and the conversation he had with me after the first session, it's still very clear with me. He said what a fantastic player I was and to hear that from a first team manager who's not been at the club long was, was quite a boost. Obviously, um, we then obviously, you know, took the trip of going on loan um, and he didn't want me to go on loan. I think he'd tell you this himself. He said to me at the time, I made a couple of appearances. I came on in the FA Cup and he said, look, to be honest, I don't really want you to go on loan. I want you to, to learn the way I want to play because it's different to what the club have done before. And I want you to really engross yourself into it and be around it. And at the time, it was a tough decision because I was on the bench in the championship, I think 19, thinking I'm in a really good place here. I've made my debut against Chelsea. Yeah, it was an unlucky result. But, you know, the fact that a manager wants to put me on in a game like that, I was thinking I'm in a great place. So for me, the, the relationship I have with the manager is quite unique. So I think we've always been honest with each other. We've always been able to have conversations about, you know, the ins and outs like at the start of this season. And just to have honest conversations with each other. And I think he wanted, I think he wanted to feel, he wanted to know that I was ready, but he also wanted to feel it. And I think you can say one thing, but I think a face-to-face -face conversation, you can feel something. That's how I feel personally. And we, we had to have a couple of those. And like you say, you know, with anyone in any line of work, you always have disagreements, but there's always a mutual respect. And there's always been that. And we managed to, to come to the conclusion that, we both want to get promoted. You know, everyone at the club wants to get promoted. I told you already, I wanted to prove myself. And I know the manager trusts me and, and I trust the manager ultimately. So, you know, as much as it was a difficult period and a difficult time, you know, and, and you've got to remember as well, the manager's got the rest of the, the team to worry about. It's not just Todd Cantwell at Norwich. You know what I mean? It's not just my situation. Emmy had a similar situation. Matt's had a similar situation. So I understand that everything didn't go as smoothly as it could have, but I, I understand why it didn't as well. Mm, yeah, as you say, the relationship between players and the boss is, is more important than anything really, isn't it? But I just want to pick up on what you said there about the loan spell that you had and you saying that actually Farker didn't particularly want to send you out on loan. What were the conversations that you had? I know Neil Adams, we did a podcast with not that long ago, and he went into a lot of detail about how he looked to the club that would suit you and that would help turn you into the player that you are now. But did you go away knowing that you would come back and be in the first team setup? How did those conversations play out? Yeah, so I, I remember it pretty clearly. I think I, it was after a Bristol game away from home. I think the window was opening. Um, and I remember... I remember itching my agent saying, do you think I should go on loan here? You know, I, I don't think I'm going to play all of these games. Um, I think we weren't in a fantastic place as, as the first team in terms of positioning the table and where we wanted to be. Um, Madison was playing very, very well in a very similar position to what I played in. I said to my agent, I said, do you think it's a good idea? My agent sat me down quite honestly and said, I can see pros and cons for both. I think this has to be your call as to what you feel comfortable doing. I said to him straight away, you know, the greatest of respect. And my agent said this as well. And, and this is obviously what Neil touched on. You know, a League One or a League Two club could, could have ruined my career because I could have easily have gone there and, and looked a certain way, um, not been used as, as the right way. Um, and it could have just swallowed me up. And, you know, if you come back from a League One or League Two loan, and it's not unsuccessful, how can you expect to come into a first team? So we really had to weigh up what was the best option. And there was, off and there was offers and there was, you know, serious contenders because we're, we're talking about good teams. You know, I'm fully respectful to those divisions. They're not, they're not easy divisions, but as a 19-year-old, I think they make them even harder, um, especially someone that's only ever played in a, in a youth team at that point and only had, a, a, you know, training and stuff with a senior team. So when the, when the Dutch... Um, 
the Dutch side, Sittard, came, came in and, and spoke to my agents and then we passed it on to the club and Neil looked at it and looked into it into great detail. I think we realised and I think I, I, I remember speaking to the manager saying, I know how much you, you sort of, you like me as a player. And he went into the details of why he liked me as a player and, and how I sort of, he saw me fitting into his mould of what he wanted to do. And I said to him, I know you can't promise me minutes this season. And he agreed he couldn't promise me minutes this season, but he said I was always in his thinking. I said, I would really like to go out and prove myself that I'm ready to play men's football week in, week out. And I think if I talk about a loan to, you know, a second division Dutch team, it's a lot more attractive to a manager who understands that he wants to play football at a football club. He doesn't want to play, you know, a different, a different style. To, it, wasn't, it wasn't really different to what the Dutch team played. So it was, you know, ball on the floor, play out from the back, um, be brave, be confident. And it, I think because it was such a good offer and a, a proposal, I think that swayed him as well. I think if it would have been, should I go to um, Scumfork, for example, I think he would have probably turned around and say, I don't think it's, it's beneficial for you. Um, he was a bit reluctant to let me go. He, I remember him saying that he wasn't, he wasn't all for it but he was happy to let me go, which was I was very thankful for. And I, I, did, I did push it because I was, at that point, very sure that that's what I wanted to do. And I mean, to be fair, the rest is history, really, with how it went. Well, yeah, exactly. I don't think whether it's Daniel, Neil, you, your agent, anyone would uh, go back and second-guess the decision-making process because you went off to that team and, and we were getting very excited back here with the noises coming you know, watching it on social media, they really took to you and you really took to them as a team. And I mean, look what it's done for your development. You must have been delighted with how it went. Yeah, it's, it's, it was honestly, you know, even to this day now, I still, I still sometimes hit me about different memories that I had there. It wasn't just the football team, it was the area, it was the people of the area. It was just a brilliant, brilliant experience from start to finish. And it was a risk. There's, there's no lying in the fact it was a risk. I'd been a local boy, I'd only been at, at Norwich City. Um, and I've always had this, I've always had this in my heart, I've always had this in my, in my head that because I'm a local boy, I have to do a little bit more. I have to, I have, to have something different, I have to have something that's, that's more than, than what's required. Why is I, that? Why is that? It's a good point, it's a good question. I think, I think there's a mentality, and I don't know if it's just at Norwich, I, can't, I can only speak from my experience. There's, there's, it seems to me like, if, if you're local, you have to be better than someone that you could potentially sign. I feel like if you're a local lad and you come in and you do okay, you're not doing very well. Whereas if you're doing really well, you're doing okay. That's how I feel. That, that, that might be completely biased. That's just through my experience. Todd, is uh, that through the, from the fans or is that from the management? No, no, no. It's, 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 not, from, it's not from the management. It's not from the management. I, I would say it's a... It's a feeling. I wouldn't say it's necessarily fans in general. I'd say it's just a feeling around this place. Um, and, and that's kind of what I was alluding to about, like, the sticking my neck out and going to Sittard is not, like, what I should have done. Do you know what I mean? As a young English, you know, player, I should have gone to League One. But I go out and prove that, you know, I'm unique, I'm different, and I can, I can prove that I'm good enough to, to, to cause success to a football team. And luckily, I went out there. We managed to get promotion, you know, first time in 16 years, fell in love with the place, love with the fans, and came back, you know, hungrier than I was before to prove that I now want to do this in Norwich. Do you think that that kind of local element of it could kind of be a case of, okay, you went to Northgate High, was it, in Deerham? Yeah. And that there's people that are potentially huge Norwich fans that are kind of maybe went to school with you or know your family members or have some connection to you. And it kind of makes you feel, I, I don't know, I, does that have kind of some impact in it, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're touching on the right, I think you're touching on the right part. I think if, for example, you went to school with someone or you know of someone's family that is, you know, uh, and you've seen me at the park playing football, I don't know. Is it, is it a thing to say he's not really that good? If it's I... a massive thing. You, uh, you absolutely you know nailed I mean? that, Alice. It's no, a, no, I no. played with Todd Campbell at school. He wasn't that good. No, but it shouldn't be like that, should it? But I can no. see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Right, you're right. Because I think if you turn that around, you flip that on its head. I think if I was bought for 7.5 million and came in, I would be the, next, the best thing since sliced bread. But I could be the exact same player. I could do the exact same things. 
Do you know what I mean? That's, that's how I feel. I think you hit it perfectly there. Absolutely. Trans- if, if anyone did feel like that when you were first coming through, you've transformed it now, haven't you? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I do hope so. Um, mm. You know, like I, like I say, it's not, it's not always been smooth. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, I've received quite a lot of, um, I would say stick. I don't like the word abuse because I think abuse is quite a strong word. Um, a lot of stick, but I'm a footballer. I know what I signed up for in that sense. It's an opinion game. You know, you've got opinions from the important opinions right down to the completely irrelevant opinions. They're still going to be given. Um, and I feel like, yeah, you, you, in those moments, you have to really stick your neck out and say, no, I, I've devoted my life for this. You know, I, I never went to a house party because I was training. I've given absolutely everything I can. I'm not going to have you tell me that I'm not good enough because, you know, you feel like that's going to affect me in some way. Um, that's just that's just the way I am. Obviously, there were those still a lot of high moments for you. I mean, you scored against City. That's got to be high up there. They were the champions at the time, weren't they? And, you know, it wasn't an all bad season. You really got to showcase your ability in the Premier League, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I personally had some incredible moments. I think the team had some incredible moments. It wasn't, it wasn't all doom and gloom. It felt like that towards the end because of how we finished. But, I mean, at the start, you know, I, I think we really did ourselves credit. And like you say, to beat a team like Man City, which were the champions at the time. Um, yeah, I mean, there were some incredible moments. I feel like I've bridged the gap with, with the fans as such. I feel like I've bridged the gap with myself because I think quite a, few, quite a lot of it can be as well like you you work yourself up in situations and maybe you overanalyze and overthink because of your past. Um, and I think sometimes why, why I can be perceived as someone that almost sticks their head out to say things that are open and all, oh, he shouldn't say that he's a footballer. That annoys me so much that I will do it because I think I'm a footballer, but I'm still a human. So I'm exactly the same as Bob down the road. I'm exactly the same. We've both got a heart. We've both got a brain. We've got eyes. We've got ears. Just because I play football and I'm a footballer doesn't mean that I don't feel things. It doesn't mean that I can't tweet this. You know, obviously you understand you have people that support you and you have to be sensible. But I want to prove, to, I want to say to people, you know, we're not targets because we play football. You know, like us or not, you, you know, I, I wouldn't log on and start calling you every name under the sun. Do you know what I mean? Even if I wasn't a footballer, if it's the other way around. So I think, you know, I quite like outing people sometimes and, 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 and letting people know that, look, we see it and it's, it's not all right to do it all the time. It's not all right. And sometimes I'll see it and sometimes I'll respond and I'll say something that, you know, highlights it. I'm not going to drop to the level of, of insulting and playing that sort of game. But to anyone young coming up into, into the social media, the, the footballer that is of today is a very different footballer than it was 20 years ago. You have a lot more responsibilities and no one really trains you for it. No, that's uh, it's really interesting. I suppose, you know, the Premier League comes with that increased exposure again. Do you, do, if fans from other teams are giving you stick, that must feel good, right? Yeah, I mean, from other fans, honestly, it may, like that's that's part and parcel. I think it's a compliment from other teams. If 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 another fan wants to say you're overrated or something like that, they know who you are. They watch you. They know you're good because they're saying you're overrated. You know, so for me, when Alpha fans say it, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I don't mind it at all. But it's, I think that's the difference. When it's your own fans, it feels a little bit more personal because you think, I play for you. Like, I play for the badge. What do you mean? Mm. Yeah, but there's absolutely no complaints from any fans this season. I'm, I'm sure, you know, no one can say anything negative now. But how prepared do you feel for next season? Obviously, we've touched on the fact that at the time of recording, there's still a little way to go. But it'll be difficult for it not to happen right now. What have you learned both, I guess, on and off the pitch from last season to take into this one? Yeah, I think, you know, like, like we touched on at the very start, you know, it was a horrible feeling how we finished the Premier League. I think going into the Premier League, there wasn't many players that had Premier League experience. I think, you know, going, going up this time, you know, hopefully, touch wood, you know, we, we get there and, and, and all is well. We have them players that have played in the Premier League and although the Premier League is constantly changing, constantly adapting, I think there will be players that now understand pressure a little bit better, understand, and this is everyone, this is speaking for myself as well, but I'm sure you know other people would agree with me. There's certain situations that you just you, you get placed into. You can't always prepare and 
and perform at your best abilities. That's natural. That, that's for anyone in any line of work. So I think being there before will help us a lot going into, you know, hopefully getting there again. How would you adapt your game? I'll t- I tell you what I noticed. Well, I might be miles off, Todd, but when we came into the Premier League last season, remember the promotion season, you said you weren't involved as much as you wanted to be. You looked stronger to me at the start of the Premier League season. I don't know if that was an area of your game that you deliberately developed, like your, your physique, but what would you look to develop to take into the Premier League next season if, you know, fingers crossed, you know, things, things go as they should? Yeah, um, no, touching on that, that, you know, I, I wanted to, to be the first name on the, on the team sheet in the Premier League. That's what I wanted. It's a dream come true to, to be in a team that were one playing in the Premier League, but two, you know, playing for my local team. I decided to, to change to the number 14 shirt, um, you know, really set my, set my sights and set my ambitions to make them quite clear. And I think that off-season, I think I had three or four days off of the six or seven, I think it was more like eight weeks we had because we won the league. I remember having like three or four days off and thinking, not a chance. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having days off. I don't need it. I almost felt like because I hadn't played, I was, I was fresh. Like that's how I felt. I went away and quite a slight built player anyway. And I didn't want to compromise the way I played by putting on a lot of weight or really trying to, to fill out. I just worked as hard as I could have worked. And I remember coming into pre-season and just being so hungry. I just remember even feeling how hungry I felt. You know, Liverpool was, was the first game of the season, just won the Champions League, won the, like, I, I, I had to play in that game. That's how I felt, I had to play in it. I had nothing to lose. Even if I played in that game and everything went wrong, people would say, you, you just play against Champions League when it's like, it's okay. And I knew if I got onto that, onto that position and, had, and gained the trust and the manager picked me for the first game of the season in such a big game, that then it was my space to lose. That's how I felt. You seem like someone that absolutely thrives off that pressure as well, though. Yeah, it was weird. You know what? Before that game, I remember having a conversation with my family who were driving up in the hotel. Obviously, it was an evening game, so I was in the hotel. And I said to them, this can go one or two ways because I can get out there at Anfield, you know, dream come true to play play in front of, you know, this this team and, and everything else. My legs could go. Like they could literally go, and and I don't know if they will or not. I said, I suppose this is the this is the day where we find out whether I'm going to play at the highest level possible or I'm not, because it's sink or swim, and it is as simple as that. Because whether you perform like it or you just sort of like glide through the game, I knew I would know myself. And when I got out there, I completely blanked everything, noise, fans, and I just played football. And and that's when I kind of knew after the game, disappointing result and whatever. You know, it was we were never expected to win that game or probably get anything out of that game. I just knew that this is for me. And would the 10 year old Todd joining Norwich way back then, what would have been 13 years ago, you're now still only 23, two promotions almost already under your belt. I want to take you back to the academy days and when you first joined Norwich. I guess you've come such, such a long way. How did it all kind of just talk us through your journey, really? Yeah, so. Um, I remember playing uh, basically with my best friends at Durham, um until um, we had a couple of conversations with, with Norwich and Colin Watts that really was desperate for me to sign. Um, and I had a brother that was in the, so he's four years older. So at the time, I think, if I, yeah, I think he was under 13s um, and he had just been released for being too small. Um, and that was the reasoning, generally, the reasoning given for him being released. And I was tiny. I mean, like, tiny. Um, although I managed to play a year up and whatever, I was so small. It was like, yeah, I was really small. Um, my, my dad went, well, no, I'm, I'm not, why would I give you my youngest son when you've just, you've just released my oldest son for being too small? Yeah, it's different, you know. Todd's got, Todd's got this, this is, you know, and, and all of this. And my mum and dad weren't having it, I'll be honest. They weren't having it at all. They said he's enjoying playing at the moment. You know, there's nothing that you're going to teach him that he doesn't already know at this point, which to me, it sounds obviously quite arrogant, but they're my parents. So, you know, at that age, you don't, you don't think for yourself. Your parents do everything for you. Um, and yeah, I remember them saying, look, Todd, they've asked you if you want to go in. Do you want to go in? And I went, no, not really. Because I'd seen what I'd done to my brother. My brother was really upset. He thought his dream of being a footballer was literally snatched away from him. And, you know, you can't win trophies when you're in Norwich Academy. You can't be players, player, manager, player, and all of the rest. So it's like, 
once you commit to this, that's it. Do you know what I mean? You're going for it. And my mum and dad said, we'll give you a couple more years of playing with your, with your local team. It wasn't until the point where even at local football, I was playing um, a year up on. So I was playing for my age group on a Saturday and a year up on the Sunday. And I really started getting, getting taken out. Like people were trying to hurt me. I think I remember my dad having an argument with um, an opponent's manager because the, the shout was, was snap his leg because I was, I, was, I was doing things that like people were saying they hadn't seen at that level before. And my dad said, and my mum said at this point, it's a safety thing putting him in the academy because we're worried that something might happen. And luckily, touch wood, I never did, I never did get injured badly when I was younger. Um, and yeah, then I committed to the academy and, and you know, I, I cracked on really. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the staff. I really enjoyed the players. It was, um, it feels like a bit of a whirlwind to where I am now, to be honest. But yeah, no, I thoroughly enjoyed each age group, really. Well, it's funny you should say doing things uh, that, that shouldn't be done or people haven't seen before, because we had Greg Crane on the podcast uh, the other week, which I'm sure you've watched and listened to. But he talked about a Todd Campwell goal in the academy. I think it was against Spurs, where mm. you went past a load of players, rounded the keeper, stopped it on the line and headed the ball in. Is this true? It is. So in the academy, we used to get like three things to improve and three things um, that you were good at. And mine was always heading. I'm awful at heading. I've said it before. I hate it. I can't do it correctly. It hurts my head, all the rest. You know, I've took the banner for it. So I'm just open with it. Um, and mine was I needed, I needed to head the ball more. Um, and I remember it clear as day. Ricky Martin's the manager. Uh, the, um, the academy manager and he stood in there and we were we were having fun against Tottenham I'll be honest we were playing really well and I think I'd scored four or five goals at this point it was only like seven seven v sevens or something like that and I, I remember dribbling past and I remember getting on my knees and heading it in because I thought this counts as a headed goal um my manager at the time absolutely loved it I remember Ricky Martin shouting me over um and saying if if I ever do that again I won't play for Norwich and I was like what do you what do you mean? Like borderline upset because I was being shouted at, and I was like, "Why am I being shouted at?" And he said, "That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful to your opponent. You you can't do that. Like it's it crosses the line." And I remember sort of running off and whatever, and I remember thinking, "Shit, oh, I didn't I didn't mean to. I, it wasn't a disrespectful thing. It was more of like a joke thing." Um, I remember getting home, and my dad and that was laughing about it all the way home, saying it was brilliant. It was brilliant. You know, don't ever change that. This is, this is what separates you from other players. This is, what, this is the difference. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And that was a fear that my family and my mum and dad, who are football people, were always worried about. I think there's a perception that academies can clone players and make players all very similar. And I think my mum and dad had a real fear of ever letting that happen to me. And I think this is why I always cross the overconfident, arrogant borderline, because it was never that. It was never, ever that. My parents raised me perfectly. Like, I'm respectful. I'd like to think, you know, morally I'm correct. I wouldn't ever do anything that was disrespectful to someone. But I, I always want to be true to who I am. And I always want to express myself to my absolute most when I play the game that I'm obsessed with. And that was what it was for me. This is, this is where the skills, the tricks and that come from. I'm, I'm, I feel like I see something and I want to try it. That's, that's how I feel. And, and that was how I felt after that. Um, after that experience and I'll be honest it didn't stop me doing stuff like that that is that is who I am and if you didn't like it and it, it was too much then you know I would have taken being released at that point because if, if that's if that's how you felt and you wanted everyone to be the same player then that's fine but that's not for me that's that's how I was sort of pushed in the direction of but like my mum always said you know never ever ever be disrespectful and never ever cross that line because that line is very fine um, and I think I do. I, I, I never have. That's how I feel. I love that. And I love that confidence that you have. And you obviously enjoy playing against Tottenham because in the FA Cup, there was that penalty last season. You even managed to fit in some keepy uppies before, didn't you? Just talk, talk us through that. Yeah, I'll be honest. You know, I was nervous walking up to that, but I didn't feel as nervous as I should have. Um, I was joking with Max before as we stood in the line, because we knew we kind of had nothing to lose at this point. We had took a very, very good team to extra time and penalties and we would play very well. And I was saying to him, I said, I'm going to chip it down the middle. I'm going to chip it down the middle. And he was like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I remember just walking up and I thought, a young lad, you know, long blonde hair, 
he's going to try something he shouldn't do. That that that's what I thought, and I thought I think what will look better is if I try and put this in the top corner. And that is honestly what I thought. And I thought if I do some keepy ups, I will relax one my teammates, but also everyone here that's trying to unsettle me. That will unsettle them. And if you can counteract that sort of feeling, because you've got sixty thousand people all wanting you to miss, you know. And I thought if I can show that. I'm confident enough to do this before. I know that they're going to think I've scored, and I know the keeper's going to think mm, this. This isn't what I thought. And I mean, in terms of connection, it couldn't have been really better, and it was just perfect. And I remember thinking as I ran off, I, I remember doing like a bit of a shush because the fans were very, very loud when I went up to that that penalty, and the silence after. You, honestly, it's it's such a nice feeling. So I'm not going to lie to you. I was absolutely livid when you were doing kick-ups, just in terms of I was standing at the other end, terrified and nervous, and everyone around me was like, what? Oh, what's he doing? He can't miss now. He can't miss now. Once you did it and scored, it was the greatest thing we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> we all watched it back. It was amazing. What a night that was, eh? Yeah, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. I think it was, um, it was one of those nights that just felt special from the get-go. The fans that travelled, the stadium was incredible. Um, our performance really I thought our performance was really good on the night um, just felt like we were going to go through that round regardless it just felt like that mm-hmm. and how, how are you preparing for next season then obviously we've talked about it not quite there but given all the experiences you've had so far a lot of them positive how are you looking forward now yeah I think it's I think it's important to you know to to go for me personally to go in and, and prove myself again you know, one good one good season that I had is not enough for me. Um, I want to prove myself and I want to better myself. I feel like I'm a better footballer now. I've got experience that I didn't have before. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've got a better a better mentality going into the season. You know, there's going to be a lot lot more of a fight. I can promise you that because I think no one wants to ever be in a team that gets relegated again. Um, this change in move definitely doesn't because there's no way you can be that hungry to win a to win a title. And then, and then go in and be happy to be relegated it doesn't work like that. You're either winners or you're not. And I think hopefully, you know, obviously everyone knows that changing rooms change, you know, um, come the end of season, there'll be people out and new people in. But I think there's a good core there of players that, that really want to, you know, to stay up, definitely. Who do you enjoy from that, from that change room? Who do you enjoy being on a football pitch with, training week in, week out? Who, who makes your Norwich City experience for you? I think um, traditionally, obviously, me, Max and Ben and Jamal were very close and there's no hiding that. We were very close and me and Max have kept a very, a very close sort of um, relationship for, throughout, really. Um, and I think Oliver Skip's been a brilliant addition, both on and off the pitch. He's a really, really down-to-earth, nice lad. Um, you know, that if I'm being honest, uh, and, and people say this to me all the time, it is actually a really, really good change in him. There, there's not... a there's not a, a bad slash nasty person in there. There's really not. I, I would honestly go and have a meal with any of them. I genuinely would. Um, and I think that that's the sort of change that sometimes a manager refers to when he says about how, the, how this group of players is quite special. Because I think from his experience as well, you get players that are in it for themselves and players that genuinely, genuinely think, you know, I, I should be playing if I'm not. I, I should be taking penalties if I'm not. You know, those sort of players. I mean, everyone knows what sort of players they are. And I don't think we have any of them. I think mean, everyone in that changing room will do everything they can to make sure that we win on a Saturday. And although they might be annoyed, although they might, you know, not be happy, they put it to the back of their mind because they're part of a winning team. And I think that mentality is the difference between doing well and hopefully winning titles. And the chemistry in particular between you and Tamu and Emmy is pretty special, isn't it? Where does that all come from? Yeah, I think um I think Emmy and Timo really enjoy I think well, yeah, we all we all really enjoy playing with each other. I think I think when you have the same the same outlook on how you want to attack and how you want to play football, I think naturally good footballers will always find a way to play well together. I do honestly think that. Because football is quite basic. I think it can be really overcomplicated. You know, it is, it is a case of, um, you know, having that connection, knowing what another player wants to do. I think for me and Timo, it's probably probably taken a little bit longer than Emmy and Timo did. But we're there. Do you know what I mean? We, we assist for each other. We score for each other. 
I think, you know, us three playing together, I think we're always confident that one of us will make a chance for one of us. Do you know what I mean? That's generally how we feel. It's, it's, it's an unspoken thing. We don't speak about it, but we know it. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of how, how it is. One of those characters that have come into the, the changing room this year, and, you know, he's, he's done brilliantly on the pitch before he sadly got injured, Ben Gibson. Um, mm. I'm going to set the cat amongst the pigeons here a little bit, Todd, now, because the other week when I was chatting to Ben Gibson, uh, on, a, on a Zoom call with some other people. We talked about dress sense, and he used the phrase, Todd Cantwell looks like he's done a cartwheel through lost property. Um, I don't know if you want to defend yourself, stand your ground, but that is a Ben Gibson quote. <laughs> you know, I'm actually surprised by that. I'll tell you why I'm surprised by that. I feel like, I feel like he's played up to the camera massively there. <laughs> I feel like he's played up to the camera because... Me and Ben Gibson have probably, and he's open enough to say this, that when he came to the club, he thought I was, was a d Like, he literally said that. thought I was someone that had themselves too much, someone that bought a lot of themselves. He said, I couldn't have had you more wrong. Me and him have got, like, a friendship that I don't think you could have ever predicted. Like, we really, really get on. Like, when, he, when he's not been here for, like, the last week with his... It was operation. I genuinely missed him. Like over England, we were speaking to each other on the phone and stuff like that. I think um, so. Him saying a statement like that, I'm not even. I'm not taking that to heart because I know he doesn't mean it. He's played up to the cameras massively there, and, and I think if me and him were stood together, he'd apologise for that. Is that a case of like opposites attracting? Then, if you say he had a completely different idea of you until he actually met you. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think obviously, you know, obviously I'm I'm a bit younger than than Gibbo and. Um, you know, he's obviously a centre back on a wing. Like, obviously, things are different, aren't they? They're, they're naturally different. But I think because we connect on like a, on a person, though, we appreciate each other as a, as footballers as well. And therefore, like, I really appreciate him being at the back, and he really appreciates me going forward. And then off the pitch, you know, we have a we have a lot in common. Which you probably, like you say, you probably wouldn't even, you know, if I if I wasn't playing football with him or in the same changing room, I probably wouldn't speak to him if I saw him on a night out. So it's just weird, isn't it? Like you wouldn't, but. We really, really get on, and I'm I'm really glad that um, that I've I've managed to meet him and that we've managed to play with him. Yeah, he's been terrific as well, and you know, so many players have had an influence on how the season's gone. Who for you have been, you know, the standout performers for the club this season? I think it goes without saying, um, Emmy has really upped it this season. Um, he had fun in the championship last year, uh, the last time we were there, and I think everyone knew he was touching on on being a, uh, as good as he is now, I think, I, I, I can't think of any team in the championship or any defender in the championship that would want to play against him. And sometimes you have players that really fancy themselves as defenders and say, oh, I'd love to play against him. You know, I'd, I'll, I'll show him sort of thing. That I don't think anyone would want to play against him. I genuinely, I genuinely don't. I don't understand. The only reason he won't, he won't play well in a game is because of him. It's not because of what you've done. His touch is that good. His vision is that good. His shooting is that good. It's if he's having an off day that, that things won't go well for him. It's not because of what anyone else has done. I, ge I genuinely believe that. There is so much talent in, in this team right now, isn't there? We've also seen recently the emergence of a lot of young talent as well. Is the ethos with Daniel Farker very much the case of if you're good enough, you're old enough? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's literally it's, it's a young player's dream because... I think exactly what you've just said. If you're good enough, the age is irrelevant. And that's how it was for me. That's how it was for Max. That's how it was for Ben. That's how it was for Jamal. And that's how it is for Andrew. That's how it is, has been for Josh, you know, and, and Dan Barden in goal. You know, we've, we've, he, he, the, manager, the manager is is as good as you could want as a young player. And I, I you know, I'm not saying that just because he's, he's our manager. It is, it is truthfully, you know, and I doubt I will meet another manager that believes that much in young players. And um, you've got that belief from the management. You've got the investment into the academy. The guys who are in the academy currently coming up behind you really couldn't be in a better position, could they? No, I don't think they could. And like we've touched on, you know, we're close to obviously potentially being a Premier League team again. Um, I think it, it affects everyone in the best way possible if we get promoted. Um, you know, if you're a Premier League player or a fringe, you know, young player in a Premier League team, you can maybe get a loan to a Championship team or a League One team. If you're a fringe player in the Championship, you might get a loan to League One, League Two or maybe Conference. So, you know, the whole way through, 
whatever way you look at it, you know, whatever age group you're in, it's just it's just better. Do you know what I mean? It's just better for everyone, staff members. So, yeah, I think it just benefits everyone, really. So with all that in mind then, Todd, what makes Norwich so special and what does it mean to you? Um, to be honest, Nor- Norwich, well, obviously it's the area, it's, it, it is my home. It is just my home. Do you know, it will always be my home, no matter where I go. You know, if if I I never played for Norwich again, it will always be my home. That that's that is how it is. You know, I was obviously born here. My granddad, my nana, big Norwich fans, um, a football fled family. My mum used to go and watch Norwich when she was younger. Um, right through to then when I was becoming a ball boy for Norwich. My sister played for the Norwich um, ladies. Uh, you know, young age groups going up. It has just been everything. Everyone around here that I was ever at friends with school, sports, Norwich, you know, it's every, it is literally everywhere. It's everything. Um, I don't think you will ever find someone moving forward. So not in the past, because I can't speak for the past, but moving forward, I don't think that you will have someone that has such a genuine connection with Norwich as I do, because I feel like it means so much more than probably I even let on sometimes. Um, and it isn't just because I play for them. I think if I wasn't a footballer, I think I would be at Cow Road watching Norwich. That's if I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I didn't fit the mould to be a footballer. I think I would be at Cow Road watching football. So that, that is, is the, truth. the perfect note to end it on. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you for speaking so openly and honestly. And enjoy the rest of the season. I, I know you will. And all the best for next season if it's not too soon to say that. Thanks, Todd. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Great stuff, Todd. Good to catch you. Thank you.